Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations. Here to talk about long wire antennas, and in particular the gain and directivity that they exhibit. Now one criterion that I need to uh, clarify at the outset with regards to long wire antennas is that that means they're at least a wavelength long at the lowest frequency of operation in which you intend to use them. Moreover, and this I did not really emphasize in the title here, the whole wire has to lie along a single straight line axis in order for this discussion and these criteria to remain valid. Once we get a long wire, say at 7 megahertz, let's just say, for, for all hypothetical purposes, 7 megahertz long wire. Now that is 40 meters in wavelength. So a one wavelength long wire at 7 megahertz would be about 40 meters or 130 feet long. Two wavelengths would be twice that, three wavelengths three times that, and so on. Up to four wavelengths and five wavelengths and sometimes even six or seven wavelengths you might have a long wire at this frequency if you have the real estate for it. But it's got to lie on a straight line for this discussion to remain valid. As you lengthen the wire, you get gain. And that gain occurs in main lobes that uh, exist in the form of cones around the wire axis. Those main lobes get sharper and sharper and more and more intense as you increase the wavelength, particularly past one wavelength. In addition to that, the cones get skinnier and skinnier, you might say. That is, the main lobes get more nearly in line with the wire axis. Now, to that end, what I've decided to try and do here is show you a directional pattern or two for a long wire antenna, let's just say hypothetically running east and west. So this is the wire axis. This is an H-plane pattern here, meaning that it's in the horizontal plane. You are looking straight down on the entire wire antenna, which is at the center of this coordinate system and you're say miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers above directly above that point so that even if the wire is several wavelengths long it's very very tiny in this uh, on this scale so this east-west line here represents the axis of your long wire if you plot a directional pattern and this red circle represents 0 dBd that is to say the gain that a dipole antenna, a half-wave dipole, would have. Your main lobes are going to look something like this. They're going to be a couple of dBd of gain, and they're going to be at somewhere around 45 degree angles with respect to the wire axis. But actually, these, uh, if this were in free space, these would be cones going all the way around the wire axis. In the elevation plane, what you're going to see is a main lobe on either side. Now this is west towards the left. And this is east towards the right. So you're going to see main lobes that look something like that. That's the wire axis. Again, we're so far away from the wire that it's just like a little speck here. And again, one wavelength long. Now let's go back to this directional pattern and see what happens if we increase this to two wavelengths. What's going to happen? Well, these main lobes are going to get a little bit sharper. They're going to get a little bit further out and they're going to get closer to the axis of the wire. That's the E-plane pattern. Or, yes, the elevation plane. That here is west and east. And in this case, in the H-plane, if we look right down at it, two wavelengths long, 
these lobes are going to get a little bit longer, a little bit sharper, and a little bit more nearly in line with the wire. So they're going to look something like this, maybe. That's two wavelengths. Now what happens if we make that wire four wavelengths long? We keep making it longer and longer and longer. If we make it four wavelengths long, these lobes are going to get even a little bit sharper, a little bit more nearly in line with the wire, and a little bit longer yet. So they're going to start to look something like this. You see the overall, sort of the overall pattern here that's evolving? Let's go back now to the E-plane and imagine a four wavelength long wire antenna. Again, we're going to see lobes that are more nearly like this. Now this makes the antenna a pretty good DX antenna. It's going to be longer than that. It's going to be a little ways out past the dipole. I'm not sure exactly how much, but as you make the wire longer and longer and longer, the main lobes will get longer out this way, sharper, and more nearly in line with the axis of the wire. There are going to be other minor lobes in here. And the longer you make the wire, the more of those minor lobes you are going to see. But these minor lobes are nowhere near as intense as the major lobes or main lobes. So that's what happens with a long wire antenna when you make it straight. As the wire gets longer, the gain in the main lobes increases and the main lobes get more nearly in line with the wire axis. And that will explain the um, phenomenon that I observed with a four wavelength wire at seven megahertz, which was about 500 feet long, flown with a parafoil kite. The main lobe was quite sharp, probably something like that. I'm not really certain exactly what these angles are, but if you are willing to get a hold of, ah, no, I don't want to change that at all. I want to make more. The ARRL antenna book. will show you a lot of directional patterns if you get an older edition. Now I had an older edition back in the 1970s. I assume that they still have the same information in there and even more as antennas have evolved. So this is the book I would recommend that you get a hold of and you can go to www.arrl.org and order it if you're really into antennas and things like that as I am. Stan Gibalisco W1GV saying 73 for now and so long.